Well, there's a lot of money, as we know, in golf. And uh, 2022, I suppose, has been a classic example of that with this uh, war that's virtually going on between uh, Live Golf and the traditional tours like the US PGA and the DP World Tour. But there's also thousands of golfers out there, professional golfers, who struggle from week to week, uh, basically, I guess, to just put enough money on the table uh, from their earnings um, to provide some of the basic things in, in life and also travel to the next tour. And that's very much part of the apprenticeship of becoming uh, um, a touring pro. And that's more or less the life that one of New Zealand's uh, leading female professional golfers, Amelia Garvey, has endured in 2022. She's played on the Epsom Tour, which is the secondary tour for the ladies LPGA in the United States. And at the end of the season, Amelia had done enough to qualify into the final stages of the tournament that provides um, basically uh, entrance into the main tour if you can finish uh, in the top 45 but there's hundreds hundreds of golfers trying to do this well Amelia just missed out but she's back in New Zealand um, and a well-earned break I'm sure and uh, probably hopefully she's going to turn around in the new year and go back to the states and try again to get on the main tour which of course is where lydia co plays and we know how much money she's made this year it has been millions uh, with me now is amelia garvey um from her home amelia well, i think where are you in christchurch uh no i'm still up in auckland right now but oh. i'm being home to christchurch in the next couple of days so tell me about life on the epsom tour i've tried to paint the picture there that it's very tough and it's very demanding uh, it's almost ruthless isn't it in some ways yeah look it's uh definitely you know there's definitely a big uh gap in prize money compared to the main tour but um it's very top heavy i'd say if you do well enough you can for sure make um enough money out there but if you're just you know just making cuts or not even making cuts it's going to be pretty hard financially but yeah you know it's it's well i've been someone's described it very well me before and they said it's a, a short-term investment for long-term gain to hopefully get onto that main tour which you know everyone is out there to do we're not out there to stay on the Epsom tour for life and um, it'd be pretty stressful if you did so you've got to keep keep hope that those you know 10 10 uh, LPJ cards at the end of the year is going to be uh going to be yours I guess so tell me about your tour, your year on the Epsom tour. What were your best finishes? Um, I had four top tens, I think, this year, and a few. Um, well, I mean, I made fifteen cuts out of twenty-one events, and um, four top tens, and was in contention come the last couple holes at one event, uh, sort of like mid-year. But I think. The main thing for me was my first year as a as a professional golfer. I learned a ton. Uh, I think I could quite confidently say that I'm a very different golfer um, right now to what I was just at the start of the year. I've got 21 professional events under my belt now, which um, has been amazing. So, yeah, it was it was a mixed bag for sure, and to to get that top 10 um, and secure your card on the Epson Tour, you definitely need to be either winning an event or coming, you know, top five mm, mm. handful of times. So, yeah, kind of reset, get back home, see the family, and then uh, go after it again. But when I look at those numbers that you've just uh, called out to me, 15 cuts out of 21, that's a, it's a, that's a very good percentage for what you classically were this year, I guess a rookie on your first time on this tour, coming to terms with American uh, tour golf courses, and four top tens and all of that, particularly the four top tens, it must have told you that you can compete with these players on the Epsom Tour, right? Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, like, it's people, I, I don't know, I don't know what kind of view there is on it being a development tour, but the, the standard of golf is still amazing. You've got, I'd say, 30 or 30 girls that could from our tour that could go out and compete on the LPGA any day um, so just to be able to put myself in contention a few times, unfortunately out on our tour you're not really rewarded for uh, consistent golf because it is very top heavy in terms of prize money um, like you'll you'll be making close to 10 grand 
uh, if you're coming in the top five, but then anything outside of that, you're just paying paying your expenses for the week if you make the cut, I'd say. So making those cuts, it is, it is nice. Obviously, you get to play, uh, you know, three, four rounds of golf, but if uh, you're getting inside those top five, and then, you, and then you're working your way up the money list, which is uh, what you have to do to finish in and get your card at the end of the year. So how has someone as young as you been able to survive financially on a tour like this then if you're not finishing regularly in the top five? Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I, um, I've i been so blessed to have a lot of people back home in New Zealand support me uh, from Golf New Zealand and also uh, some very um, generous people at my golf clubs back here. So I definitely have never uh, struggled to you know, put a meal um, on my plate at all. So that's been really nice. And it definitely allows me to go out there and uh, play golf a lot uh, freer, not really having to... Mm, to worry about the about, financial... You know, mm. Yeah, my entry fees for next week, next week or paying for a hotel or something like that. So, yeah, I think um, it honestly makes a huge difference having that support from people back here and... Um, luckily, I'll I'll have the same moving forward into next year too. And what about the demands of travel? I mean, is it a lonely existence for someone like you traveling on your own around America playing golf? Yeah, look, it's been it's been uh, an eye opener for sure. Uh, I went to college over in the states, so I graduated last year. So I've kind of been over there for the last four or five years now. Um, so it has been that been made a lot easier I've made friends in college and I've got a lot of people I know that live over there um but yeah it is you know it's it's tough but fortunate enough we they kind of set our schedule so we can you know stay in the same sort of area of the state for a couple weeks so we can drive to the event here and then Mm. we'll maybe fly over to the next next one so yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long year for sure, so it's definitely nice to be back to uh, put the feet up for a little bit before going into next year. I mean, just simple things like, okay, so you arrive in a new city or a new town for this week's golf tournament. Uh, how do you get around? Do you have to hire a car, or uh, is your tour strong enough for courtesy cars to be tra- used for transport golfers to and from the course to the hotel? No, yeah, so we uh, we always rent cars. I've, I've got a few girls, you know, that I know that are on my tour, so we sometimes uh, just get an Airbnb between us and um, look at sharing to cost-wise and stuff like that. But, yeah, we'll always rent a car and um, get away, get around that way. So this is certainly not five-star living, is it? The, the glamour yeah. of a professional sporting career. Oh, not quite, but um, you look, I've seen some amazing places this year. I've got to travel uh, the whole of America and um, it's going to be uh, a little bit easier next year as well because I'll, I'll know all these places and um, have already played the golf courses now, whereas this year I was kind of turning up to every course uh, blind and having to mm. play as much practice rounds as I could. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit easier next year too. You sound very confident that you will get a playing card for the LPGA Tour and if it doesn't come next year, it'll come maybe a bit later but um, it clearly is something that you are determined to do and are confident will do, right? Yeah, um, I mean, I've been you know, you know, I've been dreaming about being a professional golfer on the LPGA Tour since I was a young girl um, so I don't think there's much that uh, would stop me in terms of uh, trying for sure so um, as long as you know I play my cards right and you know I get I feel like in lucky you always have to get a little bit lucky as well but I think I've been around it enough now to see that you know I have the game it's just about you know putting the results up there and um, performing when you get the opportunity I guess. Well, you've seen what another New Zealander, i.e. Lydia Ko, has done this year, number one golfer in the world again, and I think somewhere in excess of $4 million. She must be an inspiration to you. Have you ever had contact with uh, Lydia? Would you know her at all? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's just awesome to see what she's done this year after, um, you know, what some people would have called struggling this past couple of years, but... 
uh, to see her back at world number one, I think, is amazing. But also just to see her, you know, love and life. She's, I think, getting married pretty soon. Um, and, yeah, it'd be great to... She's made it pretty hard to follow in her footsteps, but I'm trying for sure. But just to be able to join her out there on the LPGA tour um, yeah. with, and fly, be... you know, another Kiwi flying the flag would be great. Mm, for sure. Um, and she must be also very inspirational for you as a fellow New Zealander. Oh, well, Amelia, I really admire your confidence and your determination, and I'm sure you will succeed. And uh, you have a good break over the holidays, and uh, we wish you well for 2023 on the Epsom Tour. When's your first tournament next year? Uh, it'll be mid to late February. Well, we still haven't got the schedule yet, but that'll be um, around when it starts. You'll be hitting a lot of practice balls between now and then, will you, after a break? Yeah, I will be for sure, getting ready for next year. Mm, good stuff. Thank you, Amelia, and you have a happy Christmas as well, and thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, Brendan, thank you.